So this is the story of my vocation or my call from God. And I really love this story because my vocation was a total surprise to me. I did not see it coming. So even thinking about it and remembering it and telling the story reminds me that God knows me better than I know myself. And I just love the story. It was a pretty wild ride. So back in my early 20s, I had no idea and I wasn't interested in a vocation. If you'd have asked me back then, oh, what about if you're called? I would have had a look of horror on my face because I kind of unconsciously had a plan of where I was going. I figured that I wanted to be married, that I wanted to have a family, that love was what my life was gonna be about and that that was the same thing as marriage and family. So, well, a vocation seemed to be giving up all of the good things in life and I figured I wasn't holy enough. Good on the people who were. <laughs> I admired that, but I thought I can't have that call because it's just not where I'm going. So in my mid-twenties, I had become a teacher. I was a scuba diver. I had a few boyfriends, not all at the same time, and really lovely guys. And I decided that I wanted to travel overseas. And I was going to, in my travels, trying to figure out where God was. I knew I, I needed a stronger connection with God. So I was going to figure all that out in 12 months of travel. I went to Taizé at the beginning and absolutely loved it. And looking back now, there were similarities in what I'm living now to Taizé, life of prayer, this structure, a really simple life, young people sharing their faith. It's no wonder I loved it, but I had no idea that it was connected to my future. At the other end of my year, I traveled with my sister and we both went to Medjugorje and that was a significant step in my faith that made me realize, oh, God is more real than I'd realized and that I need to follow him. My sister was getting all inspired about marriage and how to live out marriage. We were both in the same place, listening to the same homilies and hearing very different things. But I wasn't hearing vocation so much as, I've got to get to know Jesus. I've got to follow him and figure out how to do that. So when I came back from overseas, I got this invitation to a, a youth retreat for young people, which was called a summer school of evangelization. And I went along to that and had this amazing experience of God's love. Through baptism in the Holy Spirit, I experienced the love of God for me personally, for possibly the first time. My faith had been in my head, I knew about Jesus, but in this experience, I felt like, oh, Jesus is here and this is how he feels about me and he loves me and he's always loved me and this is who I am. And that he, he, I felt an invitation to get to know him and to fall in love with him. And it was so personal and so intimate and even romantic, which surprised me because I didn't know that God could be like that. And I knew it was going to change my life in some way, but I didn't know how. The, the experience of love of God in that way probably opened me up to the question of vocation in a whole new way. I started thinking, how does a person know that they're called? Started just asking people and myself, how do you know? How do you know? And the question sat within me with a, a sense of joy and, I, and a sense of like, that would be awesome. And that was a big switch. So I knew God was involved somehow and that I'd made it, I'd turned a corner that suddenly this sounded like maybe that was a, a good possibility. And the more I looked at it, the more I thought, I wanna try this. And it didn't take me long at all before I went and found the missionaries of God's Love Sisters and said, can I have a look and you, can I join? And I started this journey of discernment from the inside. Do I really want this? Is this where I want to spend the rest of my life? Um, one significant um, incident was when I was praying about, mm, I don't know that I really want this forever. I started thinking maybe I, I'm cold, but I think I want to choose marriage anyway, because 
marriage was looking pretty attractive. I thought I want a husband and I don't want to give that up. And I felt like God was challenging me on the inside. It was like he was saying, you're free. You can go whichever way, but whether you give yourself away in marriage or give yourself away in consecrated life, give yourself away. That's the point. And when I looked at it from that perspective, I thought, I want to give myself away in consecrated life. That's where I want to go. I'd been looking at marriage as a, from a self-centered point of view, like this is all for me. And once I'd got that angle clear, I knew where I wanted to go. So I chose consecrated life. It was the best decision of my life. And I, looking back now, I've been living that for over 30 years and I love it. I love the sense of purpose, the, the life of prayer, that everything is for God, that every day I'm learning who He is and learning to love Him more. And everything I do opens up other people to the experience of sharing in that love too. That I, I want my life to give life to others so that they can experience the intimate, personal love of God. Everybody needs to experience that. That's what my life's about, and I love it.